Hello, everyone. Welcome to my streaming channel. Welcome to my studio. I'm Craig Stober. Uh, PictureMaker.com is me. If you've never uh, seen my work before, uh, you can also see plenty of my videos on my channel here. I do a show called Art Show where I interview other artists, 20 minutes, half hour. Uh, they're brief but in-depth interviews with a whole host of artists. I've done about 20 of them so far and I've got another dozen or so lined up for this summer. So check them out. They're a great way to learn about brand new artists. I've got photographers, I've got painters, I've got uh, fiber artists, uh, jewelers, uh, ceramicists, sculptors. So I know a lot of artists, so this seemed like a natural fit. So please make sure to like and subscribe so you can get the newest uh, interview in your inbox. So today I am going to be working on some new drawings, uh, new something. And while I do it, I thought I would be very specific in the topic that I'm picking. Um, let's, let's go to my face. Hi. So I'm going to be talking about uh, something very specific, which is scams. Uh, many of the artists out there will know what I'm talking about. I have a lot of experience in this because I get scammed all the time. <laughs> I don't fall for it, but I, I get solicited at least two or three times a week. I get these NFT scams and they're absolutely ridiculous. So. Uh, a lot of them are, I'm sure, bots, uh, but some of them are, uh, I'm guessing, real people, uh, just by the way I interact with them. I can tell some of them are definitely bots, though, because of the, the formulated uh, process that they do. So they always email me, especially through Instagram. They'll message me through Instagram and they'll say, you know, oh, I'm a big fan of your work. I love it. It's fantastic. You know, can we work together? Which is weird, right? Why would you say work together? Uh, can, uh, are the works yours? That's another question that they always give. Like, who, you know, it says that I'm an artist and that it's, this is my work. Oh, is this work yours? Uh, then they also say, um, uh, I'm, I'm interested in your work. Are they for sale? You know, and I've noticed that when they do this, the first thing I do to check is, is I go onto their profile and I, first I see, do, have they followed me? Have they liked any work and, of my work? And have they followed me? And usually, no, they don't even bother to follow me, but apparently they're ready to throw lots of money at me, right? So, uh, then I do check their profile and there's a couple of giveaways. One is if it's a lot of guy, the same guy and he's wearing a lot of suits and he's looking like a GQ model. So I had this guy do this to me like last week and I searched through and I found a link on one of his pages and I went to that and I found the original guy, all of his photos and he was like some sort of a GQ model. So this, so they clone other people's websites to make them look like they're big and important. And then they have uh, friends, the people who follow them. One of the things I noticed about that is uh, they're fake accounts that follow them. So they just buy, you know, a thousand people that follow them. But when you, how you can tell is you go in and you look to see how many of those people have followers and they all have 15 people or 15 posts that they do. They all have the same exact number, so you can you can tell through that. So um, so they so they always say you know oh I, I'm interested hey you know do you know about NFTs? Right. So uh, over a year ago I was interested in to learning about NFTs and I started to get some of these scams that I wasn't sure about it right. And one of the things I decided to do is I'm going to make some NFTs so that way. Um, it's, it's a very easy process. That way, if somebody is actually interested in NFTs, I'll be able to point them in the right direction, right? So I went ahead and I actually made a few. It's not hard. It wasn't a lot of effort, right? And so the first thing they'll say is, you know, oh, I'm interested in buying NFTs. And one of the giveaways is they, oh, they prey on 
artists greed because they always say the same thing. I'm willing to pay up to seven Ethereum for each NFT, you know? And then they, they maybe what they'll do is they'll send me a couple of, uh, they'll forward on some of my pictures from Instagram. These are the ones that I want, right? You know, seven and, and uh, Ethereum's is, what is that like? It's like eight grand or six, between six and eight grand, or it depends on what it is, but it's never like, I wanna buy them for what you're selling them for. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I wanna spend, you know, a ton of money. So that's, that's a scam. Uh, the other thing they always say is, <laughs> I love this one. Uh, I have, uh, my team has researched you and they have told me that it would be a good thing to do uh, to, to purchase your work for as an investment. I apparently have teams. And the first person that told me that, I told them they should fire their team because this is a terrible investment. They never want to buy originals. Um, and, and I've gone through this because I'm, you know, I'm bored. So what do I do is I talk to either the bots or the people and I, I give them questions to try to figure out what, 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 what you know, because they, they, they run through a script. So they don't want to buy originals. And it's always because, well, I bought some originals before, but the shipping, they got damaged in shipping. And I don't want to do that anymore because of insurance. I can't, you know, I'm not going to buy insurance. And then I even had one guy yell at me that the insurance was because it was on the artist's end. Should have done it, right? Whatever. He's kind of a crazy, crazy person. So, so they always do the, the uh, you know, oh, the NFT is like, you know, this is the greatest thing. So what I do is I now, in the, when they're messaging them, I say, here you go. Here's the link to my page. I have it on uh, uh, a site called OpenSea. It's like the largest platform for artists. Okay, fine, right? And they always have a problem with it. It's always like, oh, I don't use the NFT platform. I lost a bunch of money on there, or they, I got scammed on there. You know, here's the scammers telling me that they got scammed on this site, right? So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get me to use their preferred site. And I researched this and I found out that their preferred site is usually a fake site or it's a scam site. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get into your digital wallet. So they want you to, to bother to create all this stuff, connect your digital wallet to it because you have to do that in order to make an NFT. And then they get into that wallet and then they take your money, right? So it's not, that's, that's really the, the scam here. So it's always, oh, I want you to use, this is my preferred site. I always buy and, and this is great. So, so that's one of the main scams I get all the time is that, that they want me to use their site. Uh, one of the other scams um, I get is uh, if they, if I sent them like the link to OpenSea and they're like, oh, this is great. I can, I can do this. Okay, great. They're, so the, they, they're not afraid of OpenSea. I'm going to purchase this. And then I don't hear from them for a little bit. And then they send me a message with a screenshot that says, um, I tried to purchase it on OpenSea and I had a problem. I couldn't do it. It wouldn't allow me to, to complete the purchase. I think you need to click on you, something. Something is wrong with the way you have it set up. And then they say, I need to contact their customer service. And here's the link. How thoughtful he provides the link uh, so I can clear up the customer service. But it's a, so it's always like open sea support at blah, 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 right? Well, the blah, 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 blah should be OpenSea.io, and it's not. It's their fake email. And they even, sometimes they even say, well, use this code number because this was the code number that they gave me for this problem so you can clear it up. So what they're trying to do, again, is they're trying to get me to contact OpenSea, which is not OpenSea, it's their fake people, and then OpenSea would then do the same thing where they'd be like, oh, well, uh, what's your password for your wallet so we can get in to clear this up? Again, they're just trying to get into my wallet. I think I'll, most of this really stems from the fact that there are so many artists that are so hungry for any kind of sales whatsoever that they will fall for any scam, any scam whatsoever. So the NFT scam is, uh, 
that's a pretty darn huge scam. I mean, I, I mean, if I'm getting it this much, it's got to be a, a multi-million, multi-billion dollar industry of scamming. I mean, this they have this all set up. They have it formulated. They know what they're doing. They're, they they have teams of people and or teams of bots, probably, just scouring the the internet looking for artists and anything that they don't care about the quality. It's, it has nothing to do with that. It's all scam kind of a thing. It's really bad. It's really ridiculous. So meanwhile, I've had these couple of NFTs up on the NFT site since I made them, and I have had zero people actually buy them, right? So that, again, it's all sort of hype kind of a thing. And I think, you know, there was a huge, a huge spike where everybody was just like, oh, this is the future kind of a thing. Everybody was kind of, you know, a lot of artists were like doubting it, like, okay, let's go into it. And some, of, some people did make money. They were able to scam it. But it's now gotten to the point where even the people who spent, you know, $100,000 or something, even those have tanked. But all the all that, they weren't buying the image. They were buying because you can attach stuff to it. So they were buying an invite to a party on a yacht or something, some other kind of a thing. It was not, they're not just buying a picture for, for crazy money. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's not going to happen. And the p fact that the people didn't want, as soon as they, you tell them that they don't want to buy originals, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that they're not in it for... That they're trying to scam you and they don't really care about the art you know most art and they always start out with a compliment like oh you know i love your art kind of a thing if you really loved it you would follow me you would like a few things and you would you know want to purchase something so one of the other things i used to do <laughs> like i have a lot of time apparently to, to talk back to these people uh is i would say look okay if you're interested in this much say you want to spend ten thousand dollars on my nft tell you what I'll make some special ones because they always want, they don't want what, what I have. They always, oh, I only want one of these special kind of things. I say, tell you what, I'll have faith in you if you actually buy just one piece of artwork for real, you know, even a print or something like that. You buy that and then we can talk about making you something special. And of course, I never hear from them because that's not really what they're, they're trying to get my money. They're not trying to give me any money. So that was a scam. And the other the other scam I kind of wanted to, to roll out today was the, uh, the old shipping scam. So that's a scam that uh, you get where somebody tells you that they want to buy artwork. And again, it's formulated. It's usually always because they're having a wedding and they want to surprise their wife. And the wife, he know, you know, they know that uh, the wife likes your artwork. Uh, and says that I want to spend four thousand dollars, but they don't tell me what. They haven't been to my website. They don't look at anything. They, don't, they just they just want to give a certain amount. Again, they they're trying to prey on my greed, kind of a thing. So how this scam usually goes is they'll pick out artwork and they'll say, well, how much is it? Sometimes I'll say, well, you know, that's a that's a six thousand dollar piece of art or an eight thousand piece, and then they're like, that's fine. You know, we can spend more. Uh, that's great. And then the scam is, is they're going to send me a check, uh, for the full amount. Plus, uh, they're going to send me more that will also include the shipping amount. And what they ask is, uh, they, they want me to use their shipper or something. And I'm to take that extra amount and then cut them a separate check, the shipper amount for a, for a shipping check. So that's a scam. The check is always a scam in itself because the check is a fake check. So I deposit that check and then I start, you know, writing checks over top of that. Uh, so I'm out the original, whatever I wrote out and it's a fake check. So that bounces. So there's a fee that, that's involved in it. So it's just a multiple kind of, it's a crap, crap kind of thing. So here's what I do. Always, always, always. So if somebody wants to buy my work, I say, okay, he, I lay out the process to them. Don't let them dictate, oh, here's, here's how I want to buy it. No. I tell them, look, you, you tell me what it is you want, and I do all my sales through PayPal invoice. So they, I get them to send me their email and their uh, shipping address and the billing address if it's different and a confirmation of what they want. 
and I make it on an invoice and I send the invoice to them and then they have to pay it and then that's that's the firewall that that keeps the scam from happening a lot of times they'll say I don't use PayPal which is bullshit because that accepts you know every major credit card that's a big red flag uh, or uh, they refuse to give me their email address or their billing address or anything else. So when you're making an actual sale, people, people have no problem giving this out. So that's one thing I do. The other thing I do is I have a, a number of things on my website. Again, using PayPal, I use a PayPal shopping cart. And it's just a tiny piece of code. I have a WordPress site. I put that code in and I uh, just uh, configure the code real simple. It's like one line uh, and it says what to what what the, what the item is and what the price is. When they click on the button on my website, it takes them instantly to PayPal and creates an invoice for that item. And then PayPal asks, what's your email? What's your everything else? So it eliminates all that kind of stuff. So I'm you know kind of tired of, of, of making these hoops. But the hoops are funny because sometimes they're necessary. Like today, uh, we went to go to make reservations for a fancy restaurant when we're on vacation. It's one we go to all the time. And one of the, they've changed their thing. So when you when you go to make reservations at this uh, restaurant, they require you to do, it's a $15 charge for every guest uh, that you're making a reservation for. And I think it gets looped into the final bill uh, but I think they just got tired of, especially in this neighborhood, really rich people making reservations and not showing up, right? So they, they did this kind of a thing. So if, you know, we know we're going to go to the restaurant, you know, we have to lay out the money to begin with. I'm sure that if we had a problem, they would refund if we had an emergency, but otherwise we're raring to go. So these kind of firewalls are, I think we're going to see them pop up more and more all the time. So, uh, with that being said, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do some drawing over here. Um, oh, before I forget, I have to do a plug. So, these are prints that I make. Uh, if you go to my website, picturemaker.com, I have a selection of the prints. Uh, so, I, I do sell original work. I do sell um, print, uh, very small hand-pulled editions. These are digital print editions. So these are signed and numbered prints. And I'll see if I can get... Yeah, light is terrible. There you go. So these are signed and numbered prints. They're, they're an edition of 100. Uh, these are great for framing. Uh, the color is really very vibrant. And um, these are just $150 on my website. And that actually includes shipping, which is great. Um, so you, you can go right to picturemaker.com. Um, and I have, these are a selection of some of the older prints that I've done, uh, really the most popular ones. And so I do well with these prints when I go to the art fairs, I take these to the art fairs. This is my most popular print of all time. It's called Three Graces. This was made in 96. And then this is a, this is a print of that painting. Um, so I've sold a number of these. I still have a few uh, copies of this edition left. Uh, once it's gone, it's gone. That's it. Um, but that's really great. And then I have, this is the, uh, this one's an imaginary botanical. Now this one, I, I have a fondness for this picture because this was used on the cover of an Art Matters magazine. Um, I had an article done about me back in 2008 and this actually made the front cover. So that was really, that was kind of special. And then uh, here's a second, uh, this one, the large painting sits in my uh, foyer in my house. Uh, it's like maybe four feet by six feet. Uh, I really love this painting. Everybody likes something different. And then um, funny enough, this is one of the more popular ones, this simple skull. Uh, people really like this one. This one sells really well. Um, Vivian Watson has a copy of this. <laughs> I just found out. Um, so it's really, it's, it's very, uh, vibrant and dynamic. And then people frame them up. I, they're unframed and it allows people to frame them up however they want. Usually they'll do a two or three inch mat, something simple. And I, I sold a lot of these in, um, 
uh, the art fair in uh, Brooklyn, the Saatchi Art Fair. And I found out that people in Brooklyn, uh, you know, don't have a lot of money, don't have a lot of space, but they love art. So this was a great way uh, for them to to be able to afford my work. And so that was, and they were be able to support me. And sometimes, you know, the people who buy prints one year, maybe they'll be rolling in it next year and they'll you know, maybe upgrade uh, kind of something. So um, I think today I, what I'm going to do, see if I can spin, spin this a little bit so you can still see my face. If it cuts out, please forgive me. Right, let's see if I can. There we go. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to continue. Actually, this is a terrible piece of paper. Let me get a. I'd like to get an official one here. Nope, that one's terrible too. And a lot of the wrong paper. I did buy some ink today, but I think I'm still going to be using the ink wash. These are these are so thin. This is not the same paper that I have been using. All right, hold on. You know, I'm just gonna use this is a nice piece of Reeves BFK, which I really don't know what BFK stands for. Big friendly something. All right, so this is a different paper, but it'll allow me to do it. So anyway, let me. Uh, as I'm drawing this, I will continue to do my rant on <laughs> other scams, uh, other things that I've noticed. So uh, the other thing that I've, in fact, I've been telling a few of our friends lately that um, I've come to realize that probably 90 to 95% of all the people I've ever met in my life don't give crap about the arts at all. Uh, they're not interested in it. They don't talk about it. They don't seek it out. They don't look at it. Uh, it means nothing to them. And it was kind of a shocking revelation, but I realized just how many people do not care. Uh, I mean, they'll tell me that they do, they do, but I can, you can tell, you can tell they don't. Um, and that's okay, you know, it's not for everybody because, you know, there's lots of things that I don't care about as well. But it's just surprising the number of people that um, are like this. And so, living the life of an artist, if I'm trying to, try, you know, I, I'd like to sell some pictures. So, you know, 95% of everybody I meet is definitely not a client. They're, they're, they, they don't really care. Right, so they're not they're not going to buy art. Uh, they barely even want to buy a poster at IKEA. Right, um, even and it has nothing to do with socioeconomics either, because I've met a lot of rich people, and they don't buy art either. Uh, they would rather live in a house with just all white walls. It's very strange. Okay, so I'm going to be doing some more dancing figures here. And you're going to be seeing this up, upside down. There you go. Um, 
So if I'm trying to, to sell artwork, so you know, 95% of people don't care. Then out of the 5% that do care, the majority of those people, you know, probably at least more than 50%, I would say 70% of this 5%, um, don't see art as a commodity. They might like it. They might find it interesting. They might go to the museum, but it, you know, if you ask them why they're there, they don't know, you know, they're told that, you know, it's good for them. Um, they're still not buying original art. They're still just buying, you know, reproductions of stuff or, um, you know, well, I can't afford art kind of a thing. So it's, so that's real small. So say there's, you know, say there's 25% of that 5% that is interested in buying art, right? So of, of that smaller percentage, to find people who not only like art, who, who buy art, but they're interested in buying my kind of art, the kind of art that I do is so small. It's a needle in a haystack. And it's, this is true for almost every artist, which is why, you know, the artists are going groups because it's easier to uh, attract people. If you have a, a brand to it, Oh, I make, you know, realistic landscapes or I make abstract expressionism or something, or, uh, you know, if you have something like that, it's a branding, it helps you. So if you have, I hate to say it, people like me who make work that is just so odd and, you know, ungroup worthy, I guess, <laughs> what you would say, you know, it's not, it's not something you could really describe, then, um, it makes it really difficult. It, it makes it really kind of a, a challenge. Um, the other revelation that I've really come up, uh, across lately is the idea that um, the vast majority of things that I have seen in my time as an artist, and not only as an artist, but somebody in the arts. So I used to be an executive director of an art center. I used to run my own art center. I ran a theater. I ran two galleries. I used to work at big galleries. Um, I've seen, you know, sold a lot of artwork. I've had a lot of clients, I've, you know, a lot of people in classes, lots of things I've, I've, I've come across. And what I've also realized is that the vast majority of the arts, uh, things that I'm solicited for. Hey, do you need me? Okay. The vast majority of things that I'm solicited for are really for um, not for professional artists, it's for hobbyists, uh, which, you know, hobbyists need their, their outlets, uh, Sunday painters, what we sometimes call them, uh, you know, people who, who don't do it as a profession, but they do it because it's fun and nice. The vast majority of things out there are built for them. Every group show call for artists is not for serious artists. Um, it isn't, and I, I'm not being snobby about this. Uh, I'm being realistic. So imagine if you, instead of art, uh, imagine that you sold widgets, right? You're a salesman, you're a manufacturer, you're a wholesaler, and you're gonna sell these widgets, right? What kind of a business model would ever promote the fact that like an art show, you're going to enter a contest. You're going to pay to enter a contest on the hopes that you will get your widget into this show so that it can be shown in a place just for one month to potential clients. And then on top of that, the people who are hosting your widget in their gallery for the one month don't care if your piece if your widget sells or not, right? Because they've already made their money from you because they've, they've gotten your entry fee, right? If you, if you had a product, you would never, you would laugh at the idea of doing this, that, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to enter it in a contest because I think that's a great way to get my, my, my widget out there in the world, right? It's laughable. But for some reason in the, in the art world, we're like, no, okay, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Right. And, and artists, 
hand over fist, will hand over their money to do this. Ton of I mean, it's a profitable business. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Besides, no artist has ever, oh, did, you know, did you see that group show about flowers? That's the other, the themed shows. Oh, let's let's have a theme show about flowers. Well, the best artists aren't necessarily doing flowers, right? But you don't care, you just want flowers because you're trying to attract people to the show because you want it to be a success. You're not interested in actually selling flowers, uh, pictures of flowers, but you know, that's that's just kind of a, the thing. And artists, oh, I, I qualify, I make pictures of flowers, I can do this. So it makes a lot of people feel really happy, but it, the reason I'm ranting about it is it takes up so much of the oxygen in the room about what's available for professional artists. There's, there's almost next to nothing. Whew, that was a rant, wasn't it? You know, I'm not going to get much done here, so I will just talk about one more. <laughs> I'll talk about one more thing here. Um, and speaking of uh, rants and scams, <laughs> and just the way that, that it works, um, you know, it's it's great that there's that there are shows. Don't get me wrong; I, I do appreciate that there are outlets for people that are just starting out in the arts and want to do these kind of things. My problem is, is that they're overwhelming, and everybody thinks that it, it, there's so much of it that that's the way that you know the profession works. Uh, it doesn't have to. Uh, when galleries are charging for entry fees, they always listed that it's because of administration fees. Uh, no, that's not true. I've worked in galleries. Uh, if you have to survive on, uh, on administration fees, you're, you have a bad business model. Uh, what you're doing is you're making money. You're making money off the backs of artists who are hungry to do this. No other profession, uh, no other retail establishment gets free products, right? And the artists are glad to hand it over. Here you go, kind of a thing. So there's no inventory that they, you know, if I have a shop and I'm going to sell widgets, I got to buy those widgets first. And then I got to, you know, move my ass to sell those widgets. Galleries don't really, a lot of them don't have to worry about that because, you know, there's, there's, their overhead is, is very minimal. It's staffing and some letters, and that's about it. And the lights on, the rent, which is why usually when a gallery rents, they usually go out of business. So they, you know, the smarter ones own the buildings because the real estate is actually their real business. <laughs> but, uh, what was I going to say? So here's my last rant. And this is the one that really irks me, right? So I mentioned that that um, a lot of the galleries will, you know, charge for admissions or not admission. Uh, they'll charge for entry fees for the artists. So it's off the backs of the artists. So the new thing that I've noticed is grants for artists. Okay, so a grant is traditionally from a foundation that has lots of money and they want to use that money to foster the arts, to support the arts. Grants are now charging application fees. So I have to apply for the grant. So I need money in order to do what I need to do. And in order to get that money, I have to spend give you some money in order to apply to it. So like there was a grant I saw the other day and they had a $50 application fee and the grant was only $1,500. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that it's not a foundation. They don't have any money. They're just taking all the application fees, chopping off $1,500 of everything that they brought in, which is peanuts and giving it to it. And honestly, you know what $1,500 grant is? Two picture frames. That's what $1,500 is. And they make it seem like they're like this largest, oh, we're gonna, you know, help the arts and you're gonna love it, it's gonna be great. And no, that's a money maker for them. That has nothing to do, you know, even if it pays for their staffing and whatnot, that's that's free staffing for them. That's, that's not helping. But they make it seem like it's really making a huge difference. 
If it was making a huge difference, there wouldn't be a fee attached to it. That's, <laughs> that's not essentially a grant that charges an application fee is a lottery. It's not a grant. So that's my, that's my two cents for this. So I thought I was going to be um, uh, drolling tonight. I don't feel like doing that. Uh, I'm all too worked up <laughs> talking to you about scams and, and grants and all kinds of stuff. So um, if you do like these sorts of rants, if you if I've told you anything that you find interesting, please make sure to comment on this because I want to hear if this is just you know useless information that I'm sprouting. If I if it's just uh, conspiracy theories, which I don't believe it is, but conspiracy theorists never think it's conspiracy. <laughs> uh, please, you know, uh, give me something in the comment section. Uh, make sure to like this and subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to reach my goals of X number of subscribers and view times. So I really, I would really appreciate your support. And uh, I will also take, if you want to email me, cstover at picturemaker.com. If you have any requests for me to talk about, I have a lot of knowledge about the arts. I've been in it for close to 30 years and I, I've, I've seen the best of the arts and I've seen the worst of the arts. Uh, and I'm happy to talk to you about my experiences and what I know. Uh, so please make sure to tune in again. So if you subscribe, then you'll be alerted when the next time I go live. Uh, but you can just always watch the recording. So again, picturemaker.com is me for uh, learning all about the kind of work that I do. And you can, I have an online shop there for my prints. I really appreciate your support. So thanks again for stopping by. And I'll see you again, hopefully, 